students in the previous lecture I have discussed about decision making with probabilities and risk analysis. In this lecture I am going to discuss about sensitivity analysis. So, the agenda for this lecture is how to do sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity analysis can be used to determine how changes in the probabilities for the states of nature or changes in the payoff affect the recommended decision alternative. I brought a picture to show what is sensitivity analysis. Suppose if there is a small changes in probabilities or the payoff, we have to check whether our recommended decision remains same or that decision also changes or not. If there is a small change, our recommended decision also changes, then we can say that model is highly sensitive model. In many cases, the probabilities for the states of nature and the payoff are based on subjective assessment. Why we are saying subjective assessment? It uh, a, a, a tentative values, it need not be 100 percent is sure. So, sensitivity analysis helps the decision maker understand which of these inputs are critical to the choice of the best decision alternative. So, there are two input we have considered one is the probability other one is the payoff. Even in the uh, probability for the states of nature also there are two type of states of nature one is strong demand and weak demand. For example, if the probability of strong demand changes how our recommended decision will change. So, the study of this effect of one variable on our decision is nothing but our sensitivity analysis. So, if a small changes in the value of one of the input causes a change in the recommended decision alternative, the solution to the decision analysis problem is sensitive to that particular input because there is a slight changes is affecting our recommended decision. So, extra effort and care should be taken to make sure that input value is as accurate as possible because it is a very sensitive if there is small changes for example, say the probability. So, probability for strong demand is 0.8. Suppose, if it is 0.9, suppose when it is a 0.8 we have recommended D 3 is the best decision. Suppose, if the 0.8 become 0.9 whether the D 3 remains our best decision or it changes. If it is changing then we can say this input is very sensitive input. Then we should be very careful on assessing this input that is assessing uh, knowing this probability because this is very critical. On the other hand if modest to large change in the value of one of the input does not cause a change in the recommended decision alternative, the solution to the decision analysis problem is not sensitive to the particular input. Instead of saying not sensitive, we can say it is a very robust model. What we say robust? Robust in the sense even though if there is a small changes in the input that is not affecting the performance of the model. The context of robust design is differ problem to problem. Sometime the problem the model need to be very sensitive, sometime the model should not be sensitive. So, no extra time or effort would be needed to refine the estimated input value. When, when no extra effort is not required, when the model is not sensitive. That means, if the, if the, the the model is a robust model, we need not bother about slight changes in the input. Now, we will see what will happen if the probabilities for strong demand and weak demand is swapped. We know that previously the probability of strong demand is 0.8. Suppose instead of 0.8, suppose 
if I make this is 0.2, this if I make 0.8, what will happen? That is what we are going to study. So, one approach to sensitivity analysis is to select different values of probabilities of the states of nature and the payoff and then resolve the decision analysis problem. So, when we solving resolving if the rec uh, recommended decision alternative changes we know that the solution is sensitive to the change made. For example, suppose that in the problem the probability of strong demand is revised to 0 0.2 and the probability of weak demand is revised to 0 0.8 just I swapped the probability. So, when we swap the probability you see that previously so it is 0 0.8 now it is become 0 0.2 this 0 0.2 become 0 0.8 everywhere. So, what will happen here 0 0.2 multiplied by 8 0.8 multiplied by 7. So, it is getting 7.2 expected value of decision alternative 1 that is a small condominium and E V D 2 become 6.8 and E V D 3 has become minus 3.2. So, out of these 3 which is the highest one? So, E V D 1 is high one highest one. So, what has happened? We have changed the probability values and our decision what you have recommended previously we recommended D 3 is the best decision. Now, we are going to we have recommending that D 1 is the best decision because now the our recommended decision alternative has now changed. So, we are saying that now the model is sensitive. Would the recommended decision alternative change? With this probability assessment, the recommended decision alternative is to construct a small condominium complex because the probability of strong demand is only 0 0.2 and with an expected value of 7.2 million dollar. The probability of strong demand is only 0 0.2. So, constructing the large condominium complex which was our previous decision this one is the least preferred because that is the lowest value least preferred alternative with an expected value of minus 3.2 million dollar that is a loss. So, what we are uh, learning here that the probability of strong demand is changing our decision. Thus, when the probability of strong demand is large the company should build the large complex. When the probability of strong demand is small the company should build the small complex. Obviously, we could continue to modify the probabilities of the states of nature and learn even more about how changes in the probabilities affect the recommended additional alternative. So, what we have done previously it was 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 this is a strong demand and weak demand. Now, we have swapped that. So, this is 0 0.2, this is 0 0.8, then we have resolved the problem. So, what we can do instead of this, we can keep on change the probability of strong demand 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and we can resolve the problem. Every time we can see how it is affecting our recommended decision. So, the drawback to this approach is the numerous calculation required to evaluate the effect of several possible changes in the states of nature probabilities. So, that will become so cumbersome. For the special case of two states of nature in our problem only two states of nature strong demand and weak demand a graphical procedure can be used to determine how changes for the probabilities of the states of nature affect the recommended additional alternatives. If there are only two states of nature, okay, we can uh, graphically we can see how these probabilities affect the uh, additional alternative. Because when the because in a graphical we can draw only the two dimensional figure and uh, 
the p and 1 minus p. Okay. So, if the probability of strong demand is p, the probability of uh, weak demand can be written as 1 minus p. So, if there are only two possibility, we can pictorially we can represent it. If there are more than three states of nature, we cannot do it pictorially. Okay. To demonstrate this procedure, we let p denote the probability of states of nature S1 that is a strong demand. So, we are going to consider p of S1 equal to p and p of with only two states of nature in the problem, the probability of states of nature S2 is p of S2 is 1 minus p of S1 that is 1 minus p. So, we know the expression expected value of d1 is p of S1 into 8 plus p of S2 into 7. So, instead of this p of S1, we are going to write p. Instead of p of S2, we are going to write 1 minus p. So, when we simplify this 8 p plus 7 minus 7 p. So, 8 p minus 7 p is 1 p plus 7. Similarly, for d 2, d 2 generally how we used to write 14 p look at this 14, 14 p plus 5 into 1 minus p. So, what will become 14 p plus 5 minus 5 p. So, 14 minus 5 9 p plus 5. For the last one 20 p minus because there is a minus 9 into 1 minus p. So, it will become 20 p plus 9 p minus 9. So, that will be 29 p minus 9. So, so what I am going to do I go with the help of Desmos I am going to solve these 3 equations. What are the 3 equations? This one E v d 1, E v d 2 and E v d 3. I am going to uh, plot it in a graph with the help of the Desmos. So, see the first equation is E v d 1 equal to p plus 7, but in the Desmos we have to use only two variable y and x. So, E v 1 I have written as y, the p I have taken as x. So, y equal to x plus 7, we know x is the probability that should be 0 to 1. So, we have plotted, we have plotted that um, red color line. Second one y equal to 9 x plus 5, that is nothing but E v d 2 equal to 9 p plus 5 that we have drawn as a, the blue line. The third one E v d 3 that is y equal to 29 x minus 9 that is our green one. So, what will happen? In x axis we have taken the probability, in y axis it is expected value. So, when the red and the blue line intersects, we will get some value of p. What is the value of p? It is 0 0.25. Similarly, the green and the blue when it intersects, we are getting the value of 0.7. So, what we are inferring from this table? So, this table I will interpret, I have taken this screenshot of this picture, then I have pasted into the presentation. I will go back to the presentation now, I will interpret from the presentation. See the Desmos, how the Desmos software works, I have explained our in the, the in, a, in my initial lectures when we are solving a graphical method. Okay. So, what we are uh, interpreting, what we are understanding from this figure is, whenever the probability of strong demand is less than 0.25, the best alternative is D1. What is the D1 going for? Because this is the top one, going for constructing small condominium. Whenever the probability of strong demand is between 0.25 and 0.7, so this line. So, the best suggestion is to go for D2 that is constructing medium sized condominium. Whenever the probability 
of strong demand is above 0.7, the best decision is D3. So, in our given problem, you see the probability of strong demand 0.8. So, what was our conclusion? It is D3 that is going for constructing large size condominiums. So, what we are understanding? We have got the range of probability for the strong demand. What is the range of probability? Here 0 to 0 0.25, this one. Another one is this one 0.25 to 0.7, so 0.7 to 1. So, up to 0.25, D1 is the best decision. Between 0.25 and 0.7, D2 is the best decision. If the probability of strong demand goes 0.7 and above, D3 is the best decision. That is our interpretation from this picture. So, figure shows how the recommended decision changes as P, that is the probability of strong demand, state of nature S1 changes. Note that for small value of P here, for small value of P, decision alternative D1 provides, that is a small complex provides the largest expected value. See, this is the top of this two line, which one E V D1 as uh, and is thus the recommended decision. When the value of P increases to certain point, the decision alternative D2. So, if the in this range, so 0.25 to 0.7, the D2 is the best decision because that provides the largest expected value. Finally, for large value of P in this range, decision alternative D3 becomes the recommended decision because this comes on the top. So, here this is on the top here this is on the top. Now, the one input is the probabilities, the another input is the payoff. Now, we are going to study sensitivity analysis for the values of the payoff. In the original problem, the expected value for the three decision alternatives are 7.8, 12.2, 14.2. So, we have recommended the decision alternative D3. Note that the decision alternative D2, it is 12.2, was the second best decision alternative. So, decision alternative D3 will remain the optimal decision alternative as long as the expected value of D3 is greater than or equal to the expected value of second best decision alternative. So, to choose D3, it is uh, we need not have 14.2. If it is greater than the second best alternative, that is 12.2, so the D3 will be the best decision. Thus, the decision alternative D3 will remain the optimal decision alternative as long as the expected value of D3 is greater than or equal to 12.2. Now, we are going to consider S yes, is the payoff decision alternative D3 when the demand is strong. W is the payoff payoff of the decision alternative D3 when the demand is weak. We know that the probability of S1 is 0.8, probability of S2 is 0.2. So, previous is nothing but instead of this 20 and minus 9, instead of 20, I am going to write S, yes, strong demand. Instead of minus 9, I am going to write W, weak demand. So, what will be the expression for this E V D3? 0.8 into S plus 0.2 into W. Assuming that the payoff for D3 stays its original value of minus 9. Suppose instead of W, we substitute minus 9. Minus 9 million dollar when the demand is weak. So, the large complex decision alternative will remain optimal as long as. So, this expression 0.8 into S 0.2 into minus 9 is greater than 12.2. So, from this equation, we can find out the value of S. Yes. What is the S? Yes? The payoff when it is strong demand. So, solving for S, yes, so 0 0.8 minus 1.8 greater than or equal to 12.2. When you simplify, so we are getting the value uh, S yes is greater than or equal to 17.5. Recall that when the demand is strong, the decision alternative D3 
has an estimated pay of 20 million. You see that this is a 20 million here. Now, it need not be 20 by looking at the 17.5 even though instead of 20 if it is greater than 17.5 still D3, be, D3 will be our best decision. So, what we are learning the preceding calculation shows that the decision alternative D3 will remain optimal as long as the payoff for D3 when the demand is strong is at least 17.5 million dollar that is the learning. We have solved for strong demand. Suppose, if it is weak demand what will be the range? What will be the bounding values for the payoff that we will see that. So, what we are going to do now? Now, we are going to take this 20 is fixed. What is the 20 when the probability of uh, when the when it is a strong demand the payoff is 20. Then we are going to find out the value for this w. So, when we solving that we know that this is a 12.2 when we solving that we are getting the value is greater than minus 19. Now, so you see that in our problem it is given minus 19. So, what we are learning from this even though when the demand is weak the value of payoff even though it goes up to minus 19 still our D 3 will be the best decision. So, what we are learning we have found the range for our payoff. So, during that range our recommended decision D 3 will remain same recall that when the demand is weak the decision alternative D 3 has an estimated payoff of minus 9 million dollar. So, the preceding calculation shows that decision alternative D 3 will remain optimal as long as the payoff for D 3 when the demand is weak is at least minus 19 million dollar. What is the conclusion on sensitivity analysis? Based on the sensitivity analysis, we conclude that the payoff for the large complex decision alternative D3 could vary considerably and D3 would remain the recommended decision alternative. So, what we are learning even though the payoff is changes for D3, still the D3 will be the best decision. Thus, we conclude that the optimal solution for the decision problem in the discussion is not particularly sensitive to the payoff for the large complex decision alternative that is a D3. We note however, that this sensitivity analysis has been conducted based on only one change at a time. Any sensitivity analysis even in the beginning of the lecture also we have learned that only one change permitted at a time. That is only one payoff was changed and the probabilities for the states of nature remained that is p of s 1 equal to 0.8 p, and p of s 2 equal to 0.2. Note that the similar sensitivity analysis calculations can be made for the payoff associated with the small complex decision alternative d 1 and d 2. So, far we have done only for d 3 the same thing can be done for d 1 and d 2. However, in these cases decision alternative D 3 remain optimal only if the changes in the payoff for decision alternative D 1 D 2 meet the requirement of uh, meet the requirement that the E V D 1 is less than 14.2 and E V D 2 it is less than 14.2. So, what we are learning here currently the expected value of D 1 and D 2 are less than 14.2. Because it is less than 14.2 always the D 3 will be the best decision. Dear students in this lecture I have discussed about sensitivity analysis and the concept of robust design. There are two input in the given problem one is the probabilities of the states of nature and the other one is the payoff. I have graphically explained how the changes in the probability of states of nature affect our decision alternative. So, we have seen that even though there is a change in 
states the uh, change in probabilities of states of nature our decision alternative remained the same. The next input is the payoff. So, I have explained even though there is a variation in the payoff. So, that variation in the pay payoff did not affect the our decision alternative. So, we have concluded that our model is robust model that is the D 3 is the best decision. Thank you. Thank you.